Hi folks, this is Dave Higgins. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this image and we're going to enhance it to have it appear as if it was a watercolor. We're going to use Alien Skin Snap Art and Photoshop to create this effect. I have already done some retouching on this image already. I went in and took out some buoys and I cropped it to get the boat exactly where I wanted it to be. Now, the very next thing we have to do is we have to expand the canvas. So to do that, we go on up to Image, we go to Canvas Size. Now there are two ways to do this. You can, if the relative is clicked, that's what you, I mean, that, this is the way you normally see it. I usually click relative. And then I come in here and I just add two inches. Then we just click OK. And now this has put an extra space around the image. And we need this because when we do the painting, watercolors usually bleed off into the edge of the paper. So we have to create some space for that to effect to occur. Now, when you try and, and make the enhancement, if you have this hard straight line, it's really hard to get rid of it. And you have to almost overwork the image to make the line not appear. So you have to use some technique to break up the edge. And I usually use the mixing brush. When you use the mixing brush, you can work on a layer. So I click over here and create a new blank layer. So that when I work on this, what I'm doing will appear on the layer. So if I make a mistake, I'm not going to mess up my original image. So I'm going to go on over here and in the brush palette if you go to the very bottom you come to the mixer brush. Now there are lots of different brushes. I like using either one of the fan tip brushes, um, something that's got some texture to it so that it's going to break it up on the edge. Now you don't have to be terribly fussy about this. All you're trying to do is create a broken edge. The edge. Well that brush isn't working too well. Let's get a different one. Yeah, that one's doing it. And the whole object is just to obscure that line. We don't want the line to show. And I'm just doing this with the mouse. I'm not using a tablet or anything like that. Make it a little smaller when I come down the edge here. Oop, a little bigger than that. And remember, <laughs> it's just got to break up the line. That's what it's all about. And you want to really hit the corners because they're the worst. Okay, let's go back to my layers. Now, as you can see, this is on a layer. I can turn it on and off. So that if I didn't like the effect, I could just throw this layer away and start over, or I could go in and erase portions off on this if I wanted to, and not affect the original. Now, there are two ways I could do this. I can merge this down, but then again, if I don't want it later on, I'm sort of in a pinch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my background layer by dragging it down over the turn corner piece of paper. And now I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say Merge Down. And now it's on there. I have my original, plus I have the one with the enhanced edge. Now we're ready to take this into SnapBot. You, you, will have to have purchased it and installed it. And if it's in the computer, you go down under Filter, all the way to the bottom, Slide Out Menu, and then you go down here to Snap Out 4. And you click on it. And this is going to bring it into a completely different and new interface. Now, I'm not going to go into this in great detail. We're going to do a lot more videos on this particular piece of software. But for right now, all we're going to do is use the watercolor setting, which is at the very bottom. We click on that, 
and we go on in here and I've added a few of my own in here and uh, you can make your own presets and put them in but we're just going to click on abstract for right now and you can see how it really breaks it up now if you use detail you can see how it keeps it with a lot more of the original information but the whole object of this is to break up that photo as much as possible to try and get us a painterly look now this is what I love about SnapArt is it has tremendous adjustability I'm not going to explain what each one of these sliders do as we go through and do more and more of these projects you'll see but basically the brush size sort of determines what size brush you're using so if I was using a fine brush I would be able to see a lot of detail if I was using a large brush I wouldn't see as much now I can also bring in make it look more photorealistic but I don't want it I want it again broken up as much as possible to try and look make it look like a watercolor underpainting Now I'm going to go down the color and remember brightness is important so I want to try and get it a little brighter than I think I probably want it to be and I'm going to warm it up a tad SnapArt has its own textures built in um, I don't particularly like their textures so I want to have them be as little as unapparent as possible so when you come to lighting here you always want to take your lighting down to its lowest setting because that's controls if the light was casting across the paper how the texture would appear so I take that down to its lowest settings then you go to the bottom and you see it says canvas and again I set these on their lowest settings and down here you have lots of choices I go with a very flat looking paper no hot pressed is fairly not fairly plain so I'm not going to see any texture now all I do is I say okay now I have my watercolor background and what I want to do now is I want to bring back in where I want detail but what I really want to maintain this very loose soft look through a lot of the image the easiest way to do this is to put the original layer on top so I'm going to duplicate this again and I'm going to move it above the watercolor layer now I want to hide this I only want to bring through certain pieces so if you go on up to your layers palette and you go down to layer mask and you click on hide it will put a black layer mask over here for you now you need to come on over and go to your brush tools. The mixing brush does not work in this mode, so I'm just going to take that back. And you, you're going to be painting in with white, so you have to make sure the white is on top. You can click this little arrow here. And then up here, this controls how the, the masking brush is going to work. So I want it at a very low opacity because I want to bring it in very slowly. The higher this number, the quicker the image will come through and I just leave flow rate, flow rate alone for right now so now when I come down when I paint with this you can see that we're bringing through some of the detail and you can see over here in the mask you can sh it shows you with the gray where you're bringing it in I think that's a little too strong so I'm going to take it down even lower because I want to bring this in very subtly you can keep going over the area and the more you go over the area the more information it will reveal now you have to decide what your most important part of the image is and that's where you want to put the greatest amount of detail and you want the detail to diminish in the less important areas so for me the boat's important and the water line and the rock behind it so I'm going to reveal quite a bit of that 
Now I want these to be look like trees, so I'm going to go in and just pull out a little of the detail. And I'm just clicking the brush, I mean clicking the mouse and, and dragging it in a little spurts so that I can have control. There we go. Now let's say I go too far. I work this right up here and I've got the boat right back. So that's too much. Now it's easy to fix because all you have to do is bring up the black and you can go in and subtract detail. So you can work it back and forth until you get it where you want it to be. And I think I want a little bit more detail showing through in that area, so I'm going to go back to the white. There. Now this is experimenting. You've got to play with it. You know, you've got to expect that it's not going to work out sometimes and you have to start over. But you know, it's a real play process. You have to go in and push it around and try it. So right now it looks like what it is. It's a photograph that I've dropped into something that looks like a watercolor. And what I have to do now is I have to make these two things look like they're one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it back through snap out again. Now I need to get these two together so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on up and say merge down. And now I've got it all right there. Now I'm going to go back up. Go back down to alien skin. And this time I'm going to come on over here and I'm going to click on detail. And I'm going to go in and work this. to get as much detail as I want, but not too much. I'm going to take the brush size down, bring up the photo realism. And again, you have to move the sliders and see what the effect is. And that's what I like about this process. You are making the decisions. The software is not making the decisions for you. Here I'm just playing with the color vibrance. And take it down a little bit more. Stroke length uh, doesn't really do a lot in the watercolor setting. But I move it just so that I can see what I get for an effect. Okay, that looks... I think I want a little bit more realism. Okay, now I'm going to scroll down. And again, I'm going to push these back because I want to put my own texture in there. I don't want them making my texture decision for me. And again, I want to brighten it up some. Oops, wrong setting. Up here. Brighten. Remember, we're going to make it look like that watercolor paper is providing the vibrance or the whiteness of the image. And you got to just move these sliders around to see what the effect is. You can't just say, well, I want it there. You don't know where you want it until you play with it a bit. I'm going to warm it up some. Yeah, that's looking more like it. Looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to say... Now what I'm going to do is... This doesn't look exactly the way I want it to look. I want a little bit more of the detail from the bottom, so I'm just going to go in and change the opacity of that layer so that I can marry these two together. That looks pretty good. Now, 
once you get done with this, you have to now go in and adjust the tonality. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get down and I'm going to go to Brightness and Contrast. And I'm going to brighten it up a bit. And I'm going to increase the contrast. Take it back down. And again, this is where you're really try and get that watercolor effect in there. Okay, I really like the way this looks in here. The whole thing's looking pretty good, but I think the boat's a little washed out. Now I can't, it would be too difficult to in, go in and try and adjust that with a panel. So I'm just going to go on up and get my burn tool. Again, make sure it's set at a very low setting and you want it on the mid-tone. And again, you've got to go to your brush. Now you want to be using a soft brush here at the top. And I want it big enough so I can cover the whole boat. And that way you won't see any uh, lines. Okay, I have to be on the layer that the image is on. Okay. And I think I want to push the shadows up a little bit. Make this a little... Whoops. Make this a little smaller. Okay. Now I want to brighten up some of the yellow in there, so I'm going to go back to the Dodge tool. Okay. Now, we're going to add our own texture. And I have a whole selection of textures of my own. So I'm going to click down here. Oop. I'm going to click on the yin and yang circle. And I'm going to go to pattern. Now you have to have loaded these in. These don't on automatically in there, but you can get lots of these patterns online. And this is a nice watercolor that I like. Now you can adjust the coarseness of it, and I don't want this to, I mean, you can have it really be coarse, but I want it to be fairly subtle. But the warmness of the paper is also going to help because this image is a little on the blue side, I think. So you put it in there, and then you go to multiply. And we can now see what that's doing. I can turn it on and off. Now I think it's a, a little too strong, so I'm going to go to opacity and tone it down a little bit. There we go. And if I, th if I thought it was too coarse, I can still click here and go back in and adjust the coarseness of it. And that gives you a whole lot more adjustability than it does if you're trying to do it in Snap-On. So here's the finished piece. All it has to be is signed and it's ready to go. And that's how you can take a photograph and make it appear as a watercolor using snap Art and Photoshop. I hope you found this helpful, folks. Give it a like if you did.